Hi everyone, um, my name is Julie Steele and I'm a paralegal in the private client department of Harper McLeod. All of us at Harper McLeod are in lockdown as well. Our offices are closed and we're working from home as demonstrated by the fact that my cat's over there judging me and that's the garden behind me. But we're still here and we're ready to help and we're working hard to find practical solutions to assist our clients and new clients during this challenging time. My colleagues and I thought it might be an idea and be helpful for us to do a series of short videos to give you some practical tips and advice about organising your affairs during lockdown. These last few weeks have been intense, but what I think they've done for many of us is to bring into sharp focus the possibility that we could get ill. So ill in fact that we can't communicate about how we want to be treated to our family or our healthcare team. Nobody likes to think about being terminally ill or dying, but by making a simple document known as a living will or an advanced directive, you can share your views with your family and healthcare team about how you wish to be treated should you be unable to communicate due to illness or injury. Now, who can make a living will? So if you're over 16 and you're capable of understanding the nature and extent of a living will, you can make one. In Scotland, it's, living wills aren't legally binding, but what they do is they provide guidance to your family and healthcare team about how you would wish to be treated. Whilst a living will can make a specific request for a particular type of treatment, as that is not enforceable in this country, a living will can be used to refuse a specific type of treatment. So, for example, um, if you suffered from an incurable illness or injury, you could state that you didn't wish a ventilator to be used or you wouldn't want invasive surgery where there's no prospect of you recovering. You could also state your view about how you feel about the use of hydration and nutrition to prolong your life. What a living will can't do is give effect to any intervention which brings about the end of your life, such as euthanasia or assisted suicide. Now, none of these things are, are, are nice for anybody to think about, but I think it's important that we do think about them. And living wills are really useful because I think they give you a chance to convey your wishes if you're unable to communicate. It also helps your family because you're removing from them the potential burden of having to think about what you might want to happen when they're in a situation of crisis and, and potentially grief. Also, it gives you a chance to avoid any of those family conflicts that, that can happen when people are under stress. And then you know you've got the peace of mind that you've had your say and you've put forward what, what you would like to happen. So once your living will has been prepared, it needs to be signed by you in the presence of an adult, an independent adult. And then a copy should be placed um, with your solicitor, your GP and any other healthcare professionals that you've got an association with. Now, the lockdown is challenging, but it's not stopping us from preparing these types of documents for clients. We're making good use of our technology. We're on the phone. We're doing video calls. We've even been taking instructions through the window. So if you want to have a chat with me or any of my colleagues in the department, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us at harpermcleod.co.uk. Thank you.